Hi folks and welcome back to the channel and in this video I'm going to talk about this little gadget I've got in my hand and uh, it's quite revolutionized my electrical setup moreover it's allowed me to well not bother about things that need plugs in my van anymore and I'm not talking about an inverter so this story is going to go back to somewhere around about the new year where my diesel heater packed up and you know me pulled it apart and got it all going again. And but ever since then, I've been searching, searching ugh, for the reason why. And I think I found it. In fact, I've definitely found it. So this affects quite a few things that I've had problems with. And I've actually readdressed some of those things and found that the problem with my devices that didn't work or failed is actually the voltage of a lithium battery. And there's not a lot of way around that other than to rectify the voltage. So most devices are 12 volts that are made for sort of like, you know, recreational vehicles, camper vans, cars, you know, anything like that. You can either get 12 volt version or 24 volt version, which is mainly for trucks, HGVs and things. Um, I think more things are going to probably come out at 48 volts because that's the native voltage of um, like a, an EV. However, for my scenario, my electrical setup is traditional. So it's a 12 volt system. However, it's not 12 volts. So let me explain a little bit by showing you my app. Right at the bottom there, you'll see battery cell voltages. So my 12 volt single battery that I've got, uh, which is a lithium battery, um, has little tiny batteries in them. And those are made up into cells um, to sort of like increase their capacity. There are lots of parallel cells of these little batteries, which are then connected in series to make up 12 volts. However, each cell shown here is 3.6 volts. So 3.6 volts doesn't equal 12 volts. So when you actually look at it, 3.6 times four is 14.4, which we all recognize is probably around about the charging voltage, 14.4 to 14.6 of a lithium battery um, that we traditionally use now in our camper van slash motorhome because we get a lot more power out of them. However, some of these devices that we sort of want to install in our vans or motorhomes or whatever are 12 volt and they come with one of these. And on the back there, it says 12 volts and you go, no way, I can just chop the end off and plug it in. And hey presto, it'll work natively without me using an inverter. And things do work either okay, or for a while, or maybe not at all. <laughs> and stepping back to the diesel heater thing is I found my diesel heater did work. In fact, it's worked for months and months and months. It worked after I fixed it again for months and months and months. And then I noticed on one particular day, and this is what made me think back to sort of like um, around about Christmas time, New Year time, uh, which is when the engine's running, uh, it's obviously producing a charge voltage, which goes back to my electrical system. Um, the electrical system then distributes the slightly higher charge voltage to every device around the van which means that your device is that, you know, if it's a lithium battery sat at standard, it could be 13.2 volts or whatever, um, would be then pushed up to what it's showing now, which is 14.2 solar's charge in the van at the moment. So that's probably it. But the difference between 13.2 and 14.2 and 12 volts is big enough to make a difference, which could be big enough to be over 20%, which means that some of these devices are sensitive enough to not like that 20% extra voltage and they cause problems. And I noticed this driving around one day in my van around about like say New Year Christmas time and I had my diesel heater on while I was driving. I'd just set off driving away and after about 20 minutes I was thinking it's got really smelly and quiet. So I looked over at the diesel heater and it was showing E2 which is uh, an error in voltage, which actually shut down the diesel heater. Now, for those who don't know exactly about diesel heaters, uh, the diesel heater chamber gets to about 190 degrees inside. 
and then there's a fan on the back of it which blows just air straight past that chamber um, so the combustion chamber exhaust outside but that chamber gets very hot and there's an internal fan that blows air past that chamber and then out through the ducting in the van which not only cools the chamber down from overheating uh, but obviously then blows that hot air from the chamber um, around your van so very simple process but without that fan working the chamber gets hotter and hotter now fair enough because of this over voltage error um, the diesel heater system had decided to shut down so that it wasn't actually burning anymore it wasn't firing anymore but the chamber had no way to cool down so for example going back again if you switch your diesel heater off after a few hours or a few minutes or whatever you'll notice it's got an overrun so that it actually has the fan running for quite a few minutes to cool that chamber down to something it considers to be a safe kind of limit which is usually around about 50 to 60 degrees uh, and then naturally that heat will dissipate out as it cools down so my diesel heater had this error e2 over voltage which shut it down uh, i had the heater on in the van too <laughs> blowing down on my feet as well uh, which meant the diesel heater wasn't actually cooling down at all so it's sitting there around 190 degrees um, and then slightly getting warmer possibly or not cooling down as much because i had the actual van heating system on and i think that's what caused it anyway that was my initial thought that that's basically you know things haven't worked very well just like an engine which will blow a head gasket if things get too warm inside because metal surfaces start to warp slightly they don't touch each other as firmly as they should um, you know like one will change shape because it got too warm um, and therefore you start to get leaks and things like that and i think that's what caused the demise of my diesel heater around about that time of year um, and since then i've been kind of looking into it and you know Things have taken over recently, um, so it's not been as important, but I've still been kind of trying to spend time looking at it. And this is where the idea came to me. I wonder if a voltage regulator would do the job. A lot of people probably call these book converters, and you might normally get them to convert 12 volts um, into something like, I don't know, um, 24 volts or 48 volts or even 19 volts or whatever, usually to maybe power a TV that's not natively 12 volts, or maybe, Moreover, some people have used them for uh, Starlink conversions as well, because Starlink runs around about 48 volts. So um, yeah, you can upscale the voltage. You have an input side of voltage and an output side of voltage. However, I want to make sure that my output voltage is exactly 12 volts. So it's regulated to be 12 volts. Uh, and that's what this is. So this actually takes an input of between nine volts and 36 volts and outputs exactly 12 volts up to a maximum of 12 amps and you can get different versions so this one 12 amps is more than enough for running my diesel heater which on startup with the glow plug running etc etc can take around about sort of 10 11 amps so i installed one of these on my diesel heater um, supply feed so the input for 12 volts so i basically chopped the cable go into my diesel heater voltage um, and put this end the input uh, going back to the battery and this end the output going to my diesel heater so my diesel heater display shows a voltage and normally if i'm getting a bit of solar or if the engine's running and the batteries aren't fully topped up that will show 14 volts now if i'm not getting any solar um, and the engine's not running, it shows 13 volts, but it never showed 12 volts. And it's a 12 volt diesel heater. You get them in 12 volt or 24 volt. So I was thinking then, right, okay. So when my engine runs and the battery gets fully topped up, there's obviously a slight peak that it doesn't like. And I mentioned the you know, tolerances, like 20% or whatever difference. So when my engine is running or the solar is absolutely sort of like fully charging the batteries. The batteries will slightly go above 14.2 volts. They may get to 14.4 or even 14.6 volts to absolutely make sure my batteries are getting the absolute full charge they can. Now, if that voltage is just like a fraction out of the tolerances, the input voltage tolerances of the diesel here, then yeah, it's coming up with this code that's E2 over voltage. With this on board connected, and I can run the engine, everything can be topped up, 
it just runs perfectly. In fact, the diesel heater runs far better than it did without the regulator. It runs quieter, it's more efficient. It actually feels slightly warmer. So yeah, I was thinking, what else in my van might benefit from running exactly 12 volts? So I got some more. <laughs> uh, like I say, I got a few six amp versions and the 12 amp versions. So I tried my fridge, which is a 12 volt compressor fridge on the six amp version. So I've now done exactly the same as I've done with the diesel heater uh, to my fridge as well. So that is a six amp version because uh, the fridge is about four and a half amps. My fridge runs much quieter now. I don't hear it at all when I'm sleeping at night and Everything still is working fine inside. The freezer still gets to minus 18. The fridge is about minus four most of the time and everything is working perfectly. I then got the 12 amp version to run both of my Max fans, which now work so much better. They're quieter. There's no vibration at all in them. And the mechanism to open, the motor to open it, seems much stronger now. Before it seemed to, ah, like it was going over, like over speed or whatever. Whereas now it seems to operate perfectly. <laughs> so yeah, these aren't exactly sort of expensive, around about 12 to 18 pounds, depends on which version you get. So I've started to install them everywhere and thinking that something might benefit from being exactly 12 volts, which took me back to a few things that I've tried in the past, um, gadget wise, that I've had problems with and then I've dismissed them. And one of them is my uh, mobile broadband connection, my Wi-Fi, my internet connection. But that's another video <laughs> because I made a video all about it and I've made a discovery. Uh, basically, it's a video where John's going to say, I cocked up. But like I say, that's for another video. I just wanted to share this video with you guys to show what a difference the exact correct voltage makes. And I know a few of you are probably going to scream in the comments, I told you some time ago to make sure that you get a regulated voltage for your Max fans. Yeah. Yes, you did. So anyway, I'm telling you all now um, what I've actually found from that because um, seeing is believing. Right then, thanks for watching folks. Um, if you do want any of these, they're in the video description down below. And um, yeah, go try it yourself. It's worthwhile. Take care, see you again, bye.